Hi, boys and girls. Today, we're going to read A Castle on Viola Street, part one, and then you're going to be returning to the slideshow and completing the work on pages, on slides 11, 13, and 15. Today's story is going to look at context clues, things throughout the sentence, paragraph, or page that help you understand what you're reading. And it's also going to look at theme. The theme of the story is the topic or the reason why the author is writing to us, usually trying to teach us something. Okay. All right, here we go. Our vocabulary for this story for this week is appliances, small machines or devices that have a particular use. Owners, people who possess something. Possess means belong, it belongs to them. Construction, the act or process of building something. Project, a plan or proposal. And equipment, anything that is provided for a special purpose or use. And the last word, leaky, having a hole or small opening that water, light, or air can get through. All right, here we go. Castle on Viola Street by Diane de Salvo. In the old days, before I was ten, we rented an apartment on Emerald Street. It was a small place to live in for one whole family, but somehow we made the room. There always seemed to be enough to go around, even with five people at our table. Every morning, my father would get up even before the sun. Someday, things will change around here, he would whisper to me. He usually said this during the winter, when the house was beginning to feel chilly. Then he'd kiss us goodbye, tuck up our blankets, and leave for his job at the diner. My mother worked part-time in the downtown bakery while my sisters and I were at school. After school, she'd sit on the stoop and watch us play. Sometimes my mother would flip through a magazine. She'd show me pictures of houses with gardens and porches. They all looked like castles to me. I'd puff out my cheeks when I looked at our place. It was old and peeling and sorry. That's when my mother would hug me and say, our family is rich in more ways than we can count. All right. So some questions to think about while we're reading. Why do you think the boy's mother would look at pictures of houses? I don't know. Um, wonder what was thinking and what she was feeling about where she lived. And the second question, what can you tell me about the characters, the setting, the events in the story so far? Those are called story elements and they are always important to be able to understand them at each step of the story. So let's think about those for a second. And let's now look at some reasonable answers. The mother's dreams of having a home or a house of her own one day. Now remember, they rented their home that they were living in right now. And the characters, well, so far we know um, that we have the mom, the dad, and the boy or son. And it looks like they're living in a small apartment, that both parents work very hard, the children go to school, and that we know that... Um, so far, it is a made-up story, which would be fiction, okay? All right. On Saturday mornings, my mother would weigh my pockets down with quarters for the laundromat. Hold Andy's hand, she'd tell my sister. Then my mother would slip two brown bagged lunches in the wagon with a dollar for a treat. My sister and I would bump our cart 
to the Soap and Go on Viola Street. Now, across the street from the Soap and Go were three boarded up houses. My father said it was a shame. Somebody should do something about that, he'd say whenever he saw them. So when a truck pulled up and workers unloaded equipment, I started to pay attention. Hmm. I wonder what he's paying attention to. So, can you tell me if this story is in first person or third person? So, that would mean who is narrating the story? Is it the person who was there or it is a story that is being told through someone else? Something to think about. And the last, the second question here is, what is the first thing the mother does on Saturday morning? So you're retelling important detail from the story. All right, let's look at some reasonable answers. We know the story is written in first person point of view because they use words like I and my. This means that they are referring to themselves. Okay, so that would be first person. So Andy is narrating the story. And the mother gives the narrator, who is Andy, quarters to go to the laundromat so he and his sister can do the laundry at the Soap and Go on Viola Street. Right? Just some details to always remember as you're reading. What's going on over there? A lady at the Soap and Go asked. Mr. Rivera pointed to a flyer that was posted up front. I'll bet it has something to do with this, he told her. The flyer had a picture of a house and said, You too can own a home. After our laundry was dried and folded, I took my sister by the hand and rushed our wagon back to Emerald Street. Okay, so these are the questions you're going to answer. This is your part on uh, slide 11. And I put on here that answer these questions by typing or writing in complete sentences. Okay, nice, good, solid, healthy writing. What actions in the story tell you that the narrator, Andy, cares about his sister? What does he do that shows you he cares? And what do you predict the narrator, Andy, will do when he returns home from the laundromat? I think I have an idea what I think he'll do. All right. At supper, I told my parents all about what I had heard and seen. My father scrambled eggs with extra zest and my mother put ice in our water. There's a meeting tonight, I said, seven o'clock at the school. Later on, when my parents came home, they were just as excited as I was. This organization buys empty houses and fixes them up like new, said my mother. And if you're interested in helping to fix up a house for other people, my father continued, then one day other people will help fix up a house for you. That sounded like a good plan to me. It would be nice to live in a house that wasn't so chilly in winter. So we signed up, my father told me. Can we count on you to help? I hugged them so tight I almost fell out of bed. I think they knew my answer. Well, you know how sometimes, when you never believe that anything will ever be different, then one morning you just wake up and nothing is the same? That's what happened to our family that spring when the project on Viola Street began. All right. I've had those times where I didn't think anything was going to change and then everything did. All right, on this slide, number 13, you're going to answer these two questions. What did you, um, what did Andy do when he got home from the laundromat and was your prediction correct? 
And the second question, why does Andy's family sign up to work on old homes or old houses? Why do you think? Explain what's happening in this story. All right. Clang, bang, bang, smash. Those workers started early. Take a good look, my mother told us. That's what we'll be doing soon. Are all those people getting a house? I asked. Some of them will, my mother said. But anyone who wants to can help. It's called volunteering. Piece by piece, the inside of the first house came apart. One old bathtub, some cabinets, sinks, slats of wood and piping piled up like a mountain full of junk in the dumpster. Okay, great description there. Now, on slide 15, you're going to answer these questions. What does the author compare the old tub cabinets and sinks too. And the theme of this story so far is people can reach their dreams by working hard. What evidence, what detail from the story provides or proves that this theme could be true? Those are your questions. Now you're going to return to slides 11, 13, and this slide 15 and complete each of the questions. Remember, answer in nice, complete sentences. All right. That's all for now.